This video is in response to a question asked in a study group for an MIT online course. And the course is Walter Lewin's course 802, which is on uh, electricity and magnetism. And the topics that we're going to talk about are covered in lecture 17. Uh, the subtitle of this little video might be uh, eddy currents or magnetic breaking. And the specific question that was asked is the following. Suppose we're given a wire loop, at this rectangular looking thing, that's entering into a magnetic field. Uh, it will slow down. Suppose it has an initial velocity of, uh, let's say, 10 meters per second. It will actually slow down because of something called magnetic braking. So the problem is to determine that uh, equation of motion for uh, the motion of the wire loop through the field that comes about due to magnetic braking. So the givens are this here. Up here, we're given a magnetic field. We're told that the mass of the wire loop is uh, one gram or one one thousandth of a gram. We're told that the uh, resistance of this wire is one ohm, which is a, a real, it's a large resistance. If this were a copper wire, for instance, it'd be like uh, 10 to the minus fourth smaller than this. The resistance would be much smaller for copper wire. So this has a, this wire has a lot of resistivity and it makes a, a big difference in uh, the nature of the motion. And let's suppose the side of this wire entering into the field is S, and let's attach a number to that. Let's say it's one tenth of a meter. So that's this side here, the side entering the field. And we're assuming that it has some initial velocity of 10 meters per second. We'll call that V sub O. And I'm going to be working with the uh, the formulas rather than the actual numbers. We're going to, we want to derive a formula to apply no matter what numbers we have. Uh, so our problem then is to uh, compute from that information this function here, which is the the equation of motion. X of t tells you how deep into the magnetic field the wire loop is penetrated. And we're assuming that uh, the magnetic field starts at x equals zero, and there's no fringing of the magnetic field. It's an ideal situation, so uh, not exactly uh, you know, true to life, but uh, let's just assume that. And as time goes on, the wire advances into the magnetic field, and the distance that it penetrates into the field we'll call x of t. So that x of t is the function that we want to uh, derive or solve for. And how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is set up a differential equation and then solve that differential equation. And this is the solution up here, this uh, function x of t. I'm going to break up the module into four different videos uh, just so you can focus on uh, sort of the, the, the section that's of most interest to you. In the first video, which is this video, I'm just going to set up the problem and uh, describe what we mean by these terms here, these computed terms. And this is sort of review. All this uh, material, or all these uh, formulas are really uh, derived in previous uh, modules, uh, previous uh, lectures covered by Walter Lewin. So I'm going to assume you sort of know what's going on there. Uh, so that's going to be the first video which is this video. In the second video, I'm actually going to derive the differential equation using energy considerations. Uh, conservation of energy principle will uh, give me a differential equation. I'm going to state the solution of that differential equation. I'm not going to derive it. I'm just going to state it, and we'll test it and show that it works. Uh, I want to do the derivation in a uh, separate video because a lot of people probably once they see the differential equation if you have any experience with differential equation you'll say oh yeah I know what the solution that is right away so I'll set that off uh, for uh, people 
aren't quite that familiar with differential equations, you can look at that. In the third video, I'm going to derive the same differential equation using a uh, what's called the Lorentz law. Remember what the Lorentz law is. This is the Lorentz law up here in the corner. Lorentz law says if you tell me what the magnetic field is, B, and you tell me the velocity of the particle, I will tell you what the force is on that particle. So we can uh, look at the forces on the individual charges moving around this wire and um, set up a differential equation in that way. And we'll see it's the same differential equation we got um, using the conservation of energy approach. Uh, this way, though, it becomes a little clearer where the braking comes from. And we'll discuss that in the third video. So let me just continue with this overview a little bit. Uh, in the process of our derivation of the differential equation, we're going to define some constants, maybe just really for convenience. Uh, this k, for instance, if we look at what that is, that is defined in terms of you know, a bunch of these given values back here. And as I say, it's just for convenience. We could uh, not use this definition k. We could just carry this expression along as we do all our equation manipulation, but it's kind of a nuisance having to type this out uh, over and over again. So in order to make life a little easier, we call that quantity k and then just deal with k in our manipulations. Okay, so let's continue by discussing these quantities here. And let's go to our initial conditions picture. Here is our wire loop as it is about to enter the magnetic field. As time goes on, it enters the magnetic field. Uh, the pink area or the pink region represents its penetration into the field. And we'll call that area A. The magnetic flux is defined to be A times B. Now B is constant, but A is changing. So the magnetic flux is changing over time. In fact, here's the equation for the magnetic flux as a function of time. And how is A a function of time? Well, let's use this function here. A of t is S times X of t. This area here, this pink region, is the side S multiplied by this side X of T. So uh, that then is the flux, the magnetic flux at time T. And what about the change with respect to time? Well, if we just differentiate this equation, this is a constant, this is a constant. So the only thing that's going to get differentiated is X of T. So let's do that. Uh, the change in the magnetic flux is B times the side times X prime of T. So that's the velocity of this wire as it's moving into the frame. Now that velocity is going to be changing with time. That's where the magnetic braking comes in. It started out at 10 meters per second, but over time it's going to come down. Let's actually look at our solution in graphic form just so you can see what it looks like. The red line is the velocity. It starts out at 10 meters per second. Because of the magnetic braking, it slows down. And this blue line is actually the penetration into the field. It's initially at zero. And after 50 seconds, it's about 100 meters into the field. Well, for this to work out, that means our field has to be at least 100 meters long. It's a huge field. And our side here has to be at least 100 meters long. Otherwise, this wire rectangle would penetrate the loop. And once it's, or it would penetrate the, uh, the magnetic field completely. And once it's completely inside, the, the flux is no longer changing. So there'd be no more magnetic breaking. So we have to assume that it's... Uh, 
this side here is always outside the magnetic field during the uh, course of our analysis. All right, let's talk about these quantities up here. As I said, these are all, you know, things that were covered in previous lectures. So let's just go through them quickly, though. The most important one is probably this EMF here. We've already described what the flux is. Now let's talk about the EMF. The EMF is uh, gotten by means of Faraday's law. Now here's Faraday's law. Here is the differential form of Faraday's law. Here's the integral form. So these are equivalent expressions. And then finally, this is the uh, form that we'll be using it in. And notice this thing here is the EMF. If you integrate an electric field over a distance, E times D is voltage, which is another word for EMF. And this thing over here, the integral over the surface, uh, the surface of the wire loop, you know, sort of a soap film covering the uh, interior of the wire loop. If you integrate over that surface, uh, that's the flux, and you uh, differentiate with respect to time, that is this thing here. In other words, this thing down here is the same as this thing up here. But Faraday's law tells us that the EMF is equal to uh, minus d phi dt. Right, that that you know that's the most important uh, let's say pre-concept you have to be comfortable with. And what about I? Well, I is just a current, and if we use Ohm's law. The current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So it's the EMF divided by the resistance. P stands for power, and that's joules per second is the unit. That's what the J stands for, and the J over S, that's uh, joules per second. And what is that power? Well, this is uh, something that uh, students of uh, electrodynamics should be familiar with. The power is given by I times V, and I is... Um, or V is I over, is I times R, V is I times R, so the power is I squared R, uh, which comes out to be joules per second, uh, which is what it should be. And, and then for convenience, we define A as just the acceleration, which is X double prime of T, the second derivative of our uh, location function. And then I stick an F in here, just so I can state the some facts in ways that are familiar to you. This F is mass times acceleration, so that's just Newton's second law. Those are all my terms, and I'm going to get my differential equation by just using those terms and substituting them into a basic equation that I get by uh, either in video two by looking at conservation of energy considerations, and in video three, by looking at Lorentz's law.